everybody, it's Jackie Jing. I'm with Dr. <laughs> Natasha Nelson, and this is our second episode of Mental Health A to Z. It's the podcast that we recently launched, and um, we were going to talk about a different topic like last week. We we're like, oh, let's talk about toxic people, whatever. But because we're all dealing <laughs> with the COVID virus pandemic, I just feel like there's a lot of other things on people's minds. I mean, like you just came into my apartment, and I'm just like so disheveled yeah. and definitely low. Um, I mean, like, it's just tough right now. I've, I've been trapped in my apartment and obviously we get out, like I had to go shopping at Costco or something, which even you said you went to the grocery store. Yeah. It's just like such a weird feeling. Like I felt panic on the road for yeah. some reason. Of course, like I'm trying to get to Costco and one of the lights <laughs> went out. So like people are, and it's LA. Yeah. So people yeah. are just being aggressive and like, and, and going, even though it wasn't yeah. their turn at the four way stop. And then I get into Costco and there's literally no water or toilet paper to, to be expected. Right. And then, um, every, nobody wants to talk to each other or yeah. like touch each other or make eye contact, which is, I understand like totally, you know, this is the social distancing thing. Like I got it, but it just like makes you feel awful. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I wanted to talk about that today because this is going to trigger and bring up everything about whether it's a relationship with you are stuck at home. So it's definitely whatever is in your relationship that you may have avoided over the you know months of not wanting to talk about, mm -hmm. it's going to be in front of you and you're going to have to talk about it at some point. And the social aspect of what happens when you're by yourself and you're home alone and it's like unable to just connect with people yeah. and that lack of connection is what's going to start to eat away internally and in our minds and so i definitely want to bring that up yeah um as a way to just highlight what's going on so that whatever you're feeling whatever you may feeling you're not alone yeah. and you're not crazy and you're not silly and you're not over dramatic like no it's real yeah. so i want to bring it up like that so, so. i think for me i mean i'm sorry to bring it <laughs> yes back to me. no that's okay but, um, <laughs> for me i'm just going through a yes. really rough time right now because um i had a recent breakup and then i recently had an ex tell me who was like, I hate to even say this, but like we were always friends and I was kind of like, always like, oh, he'll, he'll always be there. And frankly, like after all the BS I've gone through with guys recently, I was like, man, like, you know, like I want to reconnect with him and just like have a conversation with him. And he was like, I'm seeing someone else, like have a nice life. And I was like, not mad about it because if anything, I've really discovered that, you know, like if someone's your person, it fits, you yeah. know what I mean? And it's like, you know what, like him saying that, like, it doesn't fit. He's not my person, you know? And the guy before that, not my person. Great, I can deal with those emotions. But now I'm in the middle of a COVID virus pandemic dealing with those emotions. So like, it's like, all I wanna do right now is like watch Netflix and not chill. I just wanna watch Netflix with someone and like cuddle with somebody. And I'm like, no, I, I'm, I'm here all alone and it's like, you know, what I would usually do if I was single, go out, yep. um, hang out with friends, um, get coffee with them, like being social, like just getting that stuff off my mind. Instead, I'm like forced to sit here and be like, okay, like I'm all alone. And it's fine. Yeah. Like if, if it was any other situation, like I'd be like, okay, like you're good, you're fine. But I, it's like you said, like things are just so much heavier when you're not allowed to distract yourself yeah you know? so yeah anyways, and then on sorry. top of that's okay yeah me sounding <laughs> off there but yeah and then on top of because of where we live here in la it's been raining oh. and so not only the idea of being by yourself and then thinking well maybe it, maybe i i'm allowed to go for a walk and maybe i can see somebody go just out for a walk and we can't even do that so there's a lot of definitely a lot of feelings that are going to come up which yeah. it, the truth is they're always there and those are the operating systems and the feelings that they're always there and we're always driven by them we just don't deal with them yeah and so now i feel like this whole pandemic and really whether it's this you know four to six weeks or really it's the whole year i feel like this level of unsustainability where us as human beings gets to ignore everything we feel is no longer applicable. It yeah. no longer is going to work. And so if we look at this time and say, okay, the person that we get to spend the most time with is ourselves. Yay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yay. <laughs> Hate but, myself, okay. <laughs> but, but, but the truth is, I mean, joking aside, yeah. the truth is if you're uncomfortable being by yourself, this is going to magnify it mm -hmm. for the purpose for you to learn how to be comfortable by yourself, mm -hmm. which means learning all the things that you like about yourself, figuring out your routine, what kind of things you can do, 
and then finding ways to connect on that level with obviously the, yourself, but with other people experiencing the same thing. Yeah. And so there's this level of when I went to Trader Joe's this morning and they're limiting how many people can go in the store and there were about yeah. 20 people and we're all going through this and there was such a somber feeling. I felt like, yeah. okay, we can have space, but we should at least be able to say hello to each other. We should at least be able to have some civility to be, and, and overall, like everybody there was still very kind and very distant, but we should be able to look at each other and say hello and kind of acknowledge we're all in this together. Yeah. So, Everyone's just yeah. scared, I just think. We know? are, there, yes, and fear is because you don't know what's going on. And the truth is we don't, when it comes to this virus, we don't know what's happening. And there are bigger, you know, economic, financial things. And the truth is we don't know. And it's like, I, I use the example of if you're driving, if you're in your car and it's foggy and it's heavy rain and you're in a city you just moved to and you have no idea where you are, you're driving at like five miles an hour and you're like, let me look at the street sign. Let me look at the street sign. Let me look at the like, okay, where am I? What restaurants are nearby? You're really taking all the information in yeah. to know which, which way to go. And we have to come back to that same operating system because we have been going balls to the walls, crazy speed without really paying attention. Yeah. Now we're forced to go, okay, five miles an hour. Where am I? Oh, there's my street. Okay, I'll turn. No, it's and true. <laughs> Everything yes. is being processed at like a different level. Yes. Um, one thing that I have thought has been productive about any of this is that like I actually <laughs> was tired of playing video games. Like I've never said that in my entire life, but literally like I was like, okay, I need to do something besides like just playing video games. So I started like reading, which I haven't read in a long time. Yeah. I took a bath, which I have <laughs> I never have time to take a bath. No siree. I've also done uh, face masks and like mm -hmm. I'm just trying to like take care of myself. Just took yes. vitamins. Yes. Never take vitamins. The self care right now yeah. is gonna be crucial and self care of our physical bodies our emotional bodies, our intellectual body. Mm -hmm. And when all of those things start to come together and we're taking care of ourselves, that's what's going to show up in relationships, at a further, whether it's with our spouse, our children, mm -hmm. our friends. Mm -hmm. All the relationships we have are going to benefit when we are taking care of ourselves. Yeah. And that comes from, well, we have to slow down and figure out first, well, oh, a bath. Wow, what a novel idea. Yeah. Sit in the bath with a face mask yeah. and just slow down to actually start to go well do i like this not the quarantine part but yeah. what do i like what do i want to eat what yeah. do i want to do with my time what books do i want to read mm -hmm. what movies do i want to watch because if you're going to watch netflix or whatever you're in charge of what you're going to watch yeah. you go well do i actually really like it yeah. as opposed to watching something you feel like you should yeah. because that's what everybody else or your partner wants to watch you're yeah. like well what do i want to watch so i guess like <laughs> what would you be telling people who are like I mean, I'm just flat out getting so yeah. crazy. Like, I yeah. really am. And I'm also discouraged because, like, you know, and I know I'm not alone in this. I'm worried about my future. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, what in the hell is going to happen, like, with me? You know, because especially for my job, I know for, for other people that we all, so many people are affected right now. So it's just, like, how do you stay positive? How do you keep things in perspective? Like, what are there exercises that you want people yeah. to be doing? Like, well, it really isn't about, there's a fine line when I say staying positive, we don't want to be pretending like everything's fine when it's not. And think about if you're going through an earthquake, which we are, mm -hmm. you can't do anything until the earthquake stops. Mm -hmm. And then you have to take a lay of the land and see what's happened. And then you can start clearing out. And it's a process one step at a time. Right now, we're still in the earthquake phase. Mm -hmm. Things are still falling. Things are still moving. So to try to think about what am I going to build or do long term or how am I going to fix it, you can't. Mm -hmm. And that's the part that you, we just, all of us as human beings, human nature does not like to not know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so we are forced to be in a space that we don't know what's happening. There is, it's very uncomfortable. But the truth is, slowing down and just acknowledge we have to wait for the earthquakes to, to things to stop first so let's look at a plan right now they talk about four weeks maybe eight weeks of this kind of quarantine okay four to eight weeks yep. start with this chunk of time that's when you start with basics okay do you have enough food water financially are you set okay if not what do you need to do okay once you have that now you start to go with 
Well, the truth is your job may not be there and it might not come back mm -hmm. and it might not come back for a while. Yeah. And it's okay. Emotionally, intellectually, physically, it will be okay, even though it won't feel good. It's not going to feel good. Mm -hmm. And so we can't pretend it will be. Yeah. But really looking at, is there something really deep in your heart that you've been wanting to do as a project or some kind of job change or go to school or learn something that I feel like we are all being called right now to work on mm -hmm. and putting your energy into that, to creating something that may not come to fruition for another maybe four months, yeah. maybe five, but you're already working on it. Mm -hmm. So when things start moving, you are not now caught with, well, now what am I going to do? You've already been planting the seeds and working on something. Mm -hmm. Some people are writing books, could be music, could be a career change, could be online courses, whatever it is, you've got time right now to put in the energy and the time to actually do the work. Man, I needed that reminder. <laughs> There's work to be done. And the, and really we all have things that we've been wanting to do that we keep saying, oh yeah, when my schedule frees up or when I'm done with this other project, well, there you are. Mm -hmm. It's now, now you're done with that project. No, you don't, you have the time. Yeah. So we get to do just that. Start to focus on what it is you've been wanting to do and say you're going to do, just haven't been doing. So this is like a lot easier said than done. Like yes. I'm just being real with Oh, you. absolutely. Like, I know, like I want to make music on my synthesizer. That thing is still collecting dust over there. Um, I have like online classes that I should have been studying for. Somehow like, well, I mean, I play video games for five hours, so I guess it's on me. But anyway, so like, is there a ways to refocus or like, you know, yes, like start tackling these projects? Like my brain is just so ADD. Like, and I'm not just saying that, like I am diagnosed with it. Like yeah. for me to even sit down and read a book was like a huge accomplishment for me. Like I was like, oh wow, Jackie, you got like 50 pages into this book. like. I have not done that in a long time, which is embarrassing. Like I used to be a big reader, but it's just like the yeah. way things are now, like I just, I just get caught up, you know? So I am, I'm making baby steps, but I just wonder if there's like anything you can say to like help people really tackle yeah. the project. So when you think about reading, why do you think about you have to read the whole book? Like why not? I'm going to read five pages yeah. and have a list of all the things that you want to do and do five pages at a time or write one sentence of music that you want to write or all the things that you want to do without feeling you have to actually complete them. You don't have to finish them. Yeah. Just actually start them. That way. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm an Aries. <laughs> Story of my life is that, like, well, start 80 projects. But I hear that. And yeah. eventually you are going to have to complete something. But something means if you start 10 things right now, and they all sound really good as you're working on them. It may filter down to two, maybe three that really, really grab your heart yeah. that at some point when you start moving, you'll want to put more time and effort into that, yeah. but you don't have to know what it is yet. Just go ahead, but write it down. If you have a book, start a book. If you have two books, make sure they're completely different genres. So you're not mixing them and you're not, you know, skipping parts, have two books, have something with music, have, a Netflix series that you're excited about yeah. if you want and allow yourself to switch gears every 30 minutes if you want. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to learn how to cook something. Okay, things are limited at the store, but if that's your I thing, like, you want to be creative. <laughs> if you want to be creative, why not take this time? You have the time to go, well, I might as well try to learn how to make something new. Yeah. Why not? You have nowhere else to go. So oh it doesn't mean, Tasha, why are you so positive? Like I'm in such a better mood now. I was like so grumpy. She like came in. I was like, hi, I was I'm like taking vitamins and, and having tea and, tea. Brush my and having... Yeah, yeah, it was like a hot mess. Okay. Oh, I think perfect. that's great. Like yeah. the biggest takeaway there I think is like, yes, we don't know what's going to happen yeah. here, you know? So, but there's no reason to think that far in the future because like, we really don't know what's going to happen. Like, who knows? Maybe right. there will be some boom after all of this, or maybe it'll be over before we know. We don't have any idea, right? So let's live in the now, which is so cheesy for me to say, but like, let's <laughs> live in the now and um, actually tackle stuff that we want to. Like, why am I yeah. not doing that? It's because I'm literally wasting time and emotion on like fear and anxiety that's not, that's a waste. And you were always talking to me about like channeling negative energy. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like that's negative energy that could be put into like so many different things. So. so one of the things about, you know, fear and anxiety and depression, and they all, there are different layers and different intensities to all of them. But one of the things about 
let's say anxiety or even depression is, you know, and, and I've gone through these myself. That's why I can speak from just the part that I've experienced is that it's really easy when you feel overwhelmed and you don't know what to do or you just don't like what your options are. Mm -hmm. And that's the big key is if you, these are the options, this is where we're at right now. Well, if you don't like the options, it's easy to go, well, I could just be a complainer and, and just whine about it and just mope about it and be depressed about it. Or you go, I'll just think about what's going to happen eight months from now. And as long as you're thinking about the past or the future, you get to completely bypass and escape what's right now. Yeah. And there's a, there's a, there's a addictive quality to that. And I catch myself often going, you know, woe is me or oh, ho hum. And, but the truth, you got to stick right now. Like, yeah. and it's not, oh, let's, it's not rosy colored glasses and pretending that what's happening is not real, mm -hmm. but it's saying, okay, these are the steps that I can do today. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, I will look at the information presented and see what I can do tomorrow based on that information. Yeah. So you're trying to solve a problem that might happen four months from now. You can't solve for a month, of, you know, yeah. a problem four months out without the information. Yeah. And so that's why you can't figure it out and you're it's just so cycling annoying. around. Yeah. So when you think about right now, you go, okay, well, the problem today, what's today's issue? Focus and you take care of today. Yeah. Tomorrow's tomorrow and then one thing at a time. And it's, so it is cheesy. One day at a time. You're like, yeah. shut yeah. up, yeah. let him have it. And you know, they are cheesy and there are some, there's some truth to it too. But there is truth to it, yeah. Yes. So um, I, obviously we're talking about like someone who's like, single and trapped in their house um but there's a lot of people who are like like you know you have your daughter and you guys are trapped in like your home not a trapped <laughs> is such a bad word you guys quarantined. Are quarantined in your home yeah, yeah. and um, except for her to come out here and talk with you yeah exactly Yay, <laughs> just to come over book. she's like so cute and nice um and then there's like families that have you know yeah. i don't even know like maybe like seven people in a house right now which i can't even imagine you know yeah so i, I don't even no, I can't even deal with myself. I don't even know how to touch on that. Yeah, know, so. and it's going to be, you know, part of the relationship factor is it's easy to think about who you're dating or married to and being in close quarantine quarters with that person because whatever issues need to be dealt with that you haven't dealt with, well, if you're quarantined, they're going to come up. Mm -hmm. Or you think about if you are with somebody who's not really a big communicator and doesn't really like to talk and now you're stuck at home together, mm -hmm it's going to be magnified. Mm -hmm. And if anything that's already uncomfortable mm -hmm. at this time is just going to be magnified. Yeah. So yes, people in your family, whether it's relationship or siblings, parents, wherever you are, all of the relationship issues that are going to come up right now are meant to come up to deal with them. They're yeah. meant to be there so that you address them, mm -hmm. learn how to communicate, expressing what you feel, really learning about yourself in order to know what you need. What is it that you need? Yeah. How do you ask for what you want if you don't even know what you want or what you need? Yeah. So part of this time is learning about what is it that you need for you, being able to speak that clearly without being emotionally attacking mm -hmm. because when we're in close quarters, that's all the frustration and agitation is gonna come out. Mm -hmm. And the people that we are with that's the last person you want it to come out with, yeah. but it's the most likely person that you're going to take it out on. Yeah. And so recognizing that's imagine. what this time is about. Like yeah. we have been in this virtual, you know, thinking that we are connected with people and yet we haven't been really connecting with no. people. And this is, uh, this time is forcing us to connect with ourselves and learn how to connect with other people. That's not just pretend connection. It's yeah. actual real heart to heart, meaningful connection. So I guess my question is like, should you force those conversations or should they happen organically? And what do you do if like people are getting like agitated with each other? Those were a lot of questions. So yeah. I don't know. So Approach we'll start with the last one yeah. <laughs> because you have to go with that one first. Yeah. You never want to have a conversation when you're agitated no. or angry. That's the conversation you need to have is with yourself. Mm -hmm. When you are in that heightened state of energy, you need to be on a timeout and go by yourself. And if that means sit in your car, you sit in your car all by yourself. Mm -hmm. And one of the recommendations I have is for people to write, to use an actual paste, paper journal, but pen and paper and not technology. Because when you write on a computer with technology, it's different in your mind 
than it is if you're writing it out. Really? Okay. Yes, it, oper it, it connects with different parts of the brain. Mm -hmm. And so when you're writing out, they literally start on the paper. I feel pissed because of whatever. Yeah. And then you ask yourself, well, why am I so angry? Why do I feel so angry? Mm -hmm. Write it all out. The point about writing is not for you to read it and it's not for anybody else to read it. It's for you to tear it up and throw it away mm -hmm. or burn it. Yeah. But it's a process of getting it out of your mind and onto paper and no one else needs to know. But you have to have yeah. the conversation with yourself first mm -hmm. and before you can have a conversation with somebody else. You need to know what you need to say and why you have I to say it. You're I'm like, I, I used to write in a journal all the time. There's yep. actually, there's like one. Oh, you still have them? My diary from when I was like a teenager. <laughs> what an angsty little bee. That's all I'm going to say about oh, that. Oh, gosh. But um, it is funny because it's like, hi, mom. Me being an angsty teenager. <laughs> That's perfect. But um, for real, like, it is, it's like, I, you just get everything out and yes. it's not supposed to be well written and it's not supposed to be like for anybody else's eyes mom who somehow read that when I moved here and oh. she was like why were you so sad and angry I'm oh. like I don't know mom was a teenager and why are you reading that but Bad anyways mom, besides don't read the point yeah like, do not you know, read other people's yeah, journals but it's like <laughs> yeah. it is like it's yeah. supposed to just be like if oh, I just think of vomiting like I don't know it's yep. just like all and it's better out. instead of doing it on, a on person. person. Exactly. Yes, That's the exactly. point. Vomit on your paper. Yeah. Let it all out. And yeah. I remember when I was in the process of doing a lot of writing, yeah. I have a whole, I have pages and pages of just yeah. F-bombs. Yeah. F-bombs. <laughs> fuck you, God. Fuck you, that. <laughs> like just angry. But you know <laughs> what? Once I got all out, I didn't feel the need to say that to yeah. any person. Yeah. And therefore, if I didn't say it to anybody or anything with that kind of attacking mm -hmm. anger, then I didn't have to apologize later. Yeah. This <laughs> and is I just, it really just, good. Yeah. yeah. So I think like one thing is, okay, we're all <laughs> trapped. I'm yeah. even, I'm by myself and I need to be journaling about like what I'm frustrated about. Yeah. You know what I mean? We all could be journaling about that. Um, I guess like, what would you tell people who maybe want to initiate conversations with people who aren't good communicators? Like, should that happen organically? Or um, is that just, you know, like, should you be pushing for that? Because we have this time, like, I have no idea. Well, one of the things is seeing if you can have meaningful conversations about things that aren't necessarily personal or meaningful to yeah. you, but seeing if you can have more depth of conversations about movies that you watch or about a show and really see if you can just enjoy that kind of a conversation that's connecting mm -hmm. that isn't personal right now yeah. because right now when it's when you're in that close quarters it is hard to have personal time when you when you're just in it so yeah. but it's important to connect about whether it's food or movies or but don't just connect about fear about what you're scared about because now all you're doing is just keeping that fear energy which yeah. is just kind of Ugh, it's a downer and it's toxic. Like you don't want to be stuck in that. Yeah. So have conversations about, or music. Yeah. Music that just that you enjoy, that you share and see if it happens about, well, why do you like this song or what memory comes with this song and yeah. see if that allows for a good hearted, connected conversation without yeah. being too, too deep and too personal at the same time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I think that, I mean, unless there's anything that you want to add, we're like almost to 25 yeah. minutes. So no. I thought it was really good. Yeah. The only thing I would add is to use this, recognize that right now there's a lot of, that anger and frustration has a lot of creativity in it. There's a lot of creative energy in all those feelings. So by writing and journaling and really understanding what you're angry about, you'll find that you may tap into something very creative. And it might be, like I said, a book, a poem, a writing. Something comes of that that you may surprise yourself on what you're going to be able to do with it at a later date. So highly encourage, write it all out, put it all on paper, and then tear the paper up if you want, if, you, if there's nothing on it that you want to keep later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll be turning some stuff up later. Tear it up. Burn it. Or um, whatever you want. You yeah. know, I, I'm like so grateful that we're doing these. Yeah. Um, I think like I, I listened to our last podcast and I, I took like a lot of notes after. Like one thing I would like us to do is like maybe we could tell people like what the major takeaways are. Like I know we talked about um, self-care um, and making a, a list of like things that you want to do and like allowing like creativity to flow, you know what I mean? And, yes. um, not to focus on the outcome of all of this because like none of us really know what it is. And, um, also journaling, it doesn't matter yeah. if you're with a bunch of people or if you're by yourself. Um, and then 
you know, this is the time to have those those yeah. interesting conversations with people, you know. Yeah. With and yourself or with others. With, so. Exactly. And my takeaway is just write everything down, but knowing that all of the feelings and emotions, you're supposed to have them. They are normal. Like, don't feel like they are bad to have or your thoughts or none of those are bad feelings. Mm -hmm. Have them and allow yourself to freely express them on paper mm -hmm. so that you're not taking them out on somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. And that's my one most important takeaway. All right. Okay. Great. And uh, everybody, <laughs> Dr. Natasha Nelson, um, please make sure you follow her. What's your yes. handle again? So Natasha, N-A-T-A-C-H-A, -A Life Doctor. Okay, great. And um, if you don't already, please follow me. It's at Jackie Jing. And um, please subscribe to my mm -hmm. YouTube channel. We'll be doing this uh, mental health A to Z podcast once a week. And unless like things get like super crazy, right. you'll have to figure it out. <laughs> um, and then, um, yeah, you know, I just do a bunch of nerdy stuff. So yeah, cool. perfect. Thanks. Right, bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs>